So, this is it, huh? I pondered as I tried my best to find the stars in a night sky saturated with light pollution. I tried my best, but I couldn't see past the various lights of my college campus. It was around midnight, and I was sneaking on top of a nearby building to enjoy a quick cigarette or two in order to make my shift at work go by just a little faster. Throughout high school, I was a pretty good student, popular with a bunch of different crowds, and a star athlete. I ended up going to a prestigious college with a scholarship for track. I did what every other successful kid from high school did, became a pre-med. As school started to get tougher and tougher, a star student full of potential slowly became mediocre. And a torn meniscus ended my track career and the scholarship, and I had picked up a few bad habits. Cigarettes, booze, weed, you know the drill. The grades started to slip as well, and when I realised that it takes a lot more than an A in high school chemistry to become an orthopaedic surgeon, three years into my four-year degree, Academic probation forced me to drop out of school. Now, as a 24-year-old with no degree and too many bills to ignore, I decided to take up my old job as a campus security guard. Well, the job wasn't too bad. They gave me all the hours I needed, and all I had to do was walk students home from their late-night study sessions. Between calls, I'd find myself either playing DOTA with my co-workers in the back office, or smoking on the roof of Tate Hall. My smoke break was interrupted by a call from work. I had some walking to do. The call came from one of the main college libraries. This library was shared with the medical college. I used to spend a ton of time there studying before I dropped out. A few minutes later, I came face to face with my caller. Hi, this is Jake from 815 Catwalk. Our mascot was a cat. Hey Jake, I'm Sasha, she greeted, as if we were old friends. Sasha looked like she belonged in a sorority. She wore a white, flowery sundress and some flip-flops. Her earrings and necklace were matching with shiny gold and opals. They sparkled under the surrounding streetlights. She was attractive, no getting around it. And the sundress complimented her figure well. But it wasn't the first time I'd encountered her type on the job, so I limited the drooling. We chatted as we walked from the library over to her apartment. 20 minute stroll which would land us at the very edge of my walking perimeter. Normally this distance would have been annoying to walk, but for some reason I didn't mind it at all with Sasha's company. A few minutes in, Sasha piped up. So, what's your story, Jake? She asked as she confidently strolled past me. I wasn't sure what to say. I wished I'd had an interesting or witty way to respond but I felt that telling her about my life would bore her to sleep or just make her feel sorry for me. But for whatever reason, I decided to be honest with her. My story is of the mid-twenties college dropout. who's was just wondering where it all went wrong. I was embarrassed to notice that I might have put more emotion into that statement than I realised because I felt a slight lump in my throat when I finished. Sasha slowed her pace until we were walking side by side. Despite the fact that most people would be really uncomfortable hearing all of the woes of a stranger, she didn't seem to be bothered. I even thought I saw the faintest trace of a grin on her face. After a few more seconds, she pulled out a flask from her backpack and said, I'll drink to that. Before accepting the unmarked silver flask, I asked in surprise, What class is that for? Well, she replied, I just kept it on me for after I submitted my final paper. A little celebratory shot, she chuckled. I felt the alcohol burn my throat and coat my belly with warmth, so I conceded and took a large swig. So, what class was the paper for? What's your story, Sasha? I asked mockingly. I was still a little self-conscious about exposing myself to her like that. She ignored my second question. I was for my class on the history of martial arts, an analysis of Tang Ta, origin and application in military training. And after mentioning this, I noticed that her figure was more than attractive. It was also athletic and energetic, like she could play professional tennis. So, um, you a martial arts master or something? I inquired. Sasha laughed. <laughs> 
It was just the only lib egg class that filled my history and art requirements at the same time. Despite that, I was still a bit curious why someone with some martial arts knowledge and such a confident stride would even need me to walk with her. I just chalked it up to the fact that it was late and campus could hide some pretty sketchy people. Sasha and I kept chatting as we continued our walk. It was actually a lot of fun. I felt a genuine connection with her. However, since I was still working, I figured it would be a bad idea to ask her for a number. It would be inappropriate to hit on a client and I didn't want to lose the only job that would take me. As we neared her apartment, I was already starting to miss her. The stranger who I'd known for less than 30 minutes. Hey, Jake, she asked a little nervously. I'm pretty much done with classes for this semester, so I was going to head on a bike ride if you wanted to join me. You could borrow my roommate's bike. I was ecstatic. I never thought someone so out of my league would be into me like that. Well, the only problem was I was still on the job. Um, yeah, I'm down. I said in thinly veiled excitement. Well, the only problem is I'm still working and probably won't be off for an hour or so. Well, I could wait for a bit. Just knock when you get here. Sasha smiled with genuine enthusiasm. Oh, the rest of my shift crept by slower than it ever had before. After a few more walks, I sprinted home to change out of my uniform and grab my bike. A few minutes later, I arrived at Sasha's apartment and went to knock on her door. A few seconds later, Sasha greeted me with a big hug, likely due to the buzz she probably had, and I helped her carry her bike out of the apartment. As I felt the cool night air flow through my hair, I forgot all about my problems for just a second. So I was thinking we could try to bike to Falcon Hill so we can see the stars, Sasha said loudly as she had already started biking and was further away from me than I realized. Oh, yeah, sure. I said quickly, as I was knocked out of my trance. I used to spend a lot of time at Falcon Hill. That was where my friends and I would spend many nights hanging out and smoking weed back when I was in college. It had just occurred to me that my interest in my schoolwork was most likely stolen by these late nights at Falcon Hill. The hill was about ten miles away, way further than I was usually comfortable biking this late with, but Sasha seemed determined, and I was <laughs> too infatuated not to join her. I pedaled quickly to catch up. The streetlights that surrounded her apartment quickly disappeared into the pitch black night. The glow of our bike lights felt like the only thing saving us from being absorbed completely into the darkness. We silently pedaled for what seemed like hours. The only sound I could hear was from our bikes as we pedaled forward. The silence was eerie. A spring night like this one should have been filled with the sounds of trees, bugs, cars, or literally anything. It was like light wasn't the only thing disappearing from existence. Sounds were, too. The surrounding landscape felt more like a void than an actual space in the world, as if nothingness was daring us to venture into it. I started to get really nervous. Who was Sasha? Why was she so warm and friendly to me? Did she really find a 24-year-old rent -a cop cool or attractive enough to invite to hang out? Is she part of some cult that preys on lonely men who probably won't be missed? Hey, Sasha, I called out. What do you see in me? I couldn't believe I just said that. It was like the filter between my thoughts and words had just vanished. As she turned to face me, I noticed Sasha's face and lost the warmth I'd seen before. I couldn't read the expression on her face. I honestly could barely recognize it. It was as if a really skilled artist had drawn a model of her. Almost like her, but a bit, well, off. This was freaky as hell, and my mind went right back into kidnapping and cults. Sasha ignored my question. We just kept biking in silence. Sasha? I inquired. A little more concern and probably fear in my voice now. I was getting a really bad feeling about her. My body started to feel a little heavy, and I began to grow lightheaded. It felt like a physical manifestation of my anxiety. I decided that this would be my excuse to turn around and race back home. Hey, Sasha, I think I'm going to turn back round, I called. 
Yeah, I don't feel so well and I should probably get some rest. As I reached for the brake on my bike, I realized I couldn't move. My feet kept pedaling and I was able to steer the bike, but well, that was it. It was like I was in a trance. And this is when I really started to panic. Sasha, what the fuck's going on? I screamed. It felt like my body was an autopilot. All it could do was the bare minimum to stop me falling off my bike. As I looked around, searching for anything that could help me, I noticed it. The patterns. It felt like the trees that I could see were vibrating in place ever so slightly. That's when it hit me. Sasha, what was in that flask? I trembled, unsure if I was even speaking out loud or not. Sasha turned around again. She spoke this time. I just couldn't understand a word she was saying. It came out sounding mangled and twisted, and her face also seemed to warp and shift around as she talked, like a reflection in a funhouse mirror. Well, eventually we ended up at Falcon Hill. I regained some motor function and was able to throw myself off the bike as Sasha did the same. I landed on the ground, hard. It was still pitch black except for the two sets of bike lights, sending beams of light in four random directions. I got up off the ground in a dazed stupor. The darkness itself seemed to vibrate the same way the trees had earlier. My eyes regained focus as they caught some movement a few meters in front of me. Sasha said something else. Again, I had no idea what it was, but she was looking right at me and talking, so it must have been me she was addressing. I can't understand you, I screamed as I pounded the grassy clearing. I was in hysterics at this point. Sasha stopped talking and motioned for me to follow her. She then turned around and slowly started to move away from the area lit by our bikes. When I say she was moving, I don't mean walking. She was gliding away, her entire body slightly raised off the ground. I saw her white dress and long dark hair blowing in the slight breeze as she glided away from me, and I noticed something about her. Every fibre of my being wanted to run in the opposite direction. The same force that kept me on the bike, though, forced me into a slow crawl forwards, trailing Sasha by a few metres. My mind filled with dread as all of the remaining light drowned in the darkness. Sasha stopped, and I kept crawling until I was only a foot or two away from her. I could hardly see her in the darkness as I looked up, and I could barely make out an expression on her face. But it looked like sadness. Sasha looked tired. Her eyes were baggy and had a hollow, sunken look to them. As my eyes met hers, she began to methodically repeat the same few words to me. And the words made no sense at first, but I slowly began to piece it together. Can you see the stars? She whispered. I looked up past her eyes and gazed into the blackest sky I'd ever seen in my life. Was not a single star in sight. No moon, nothing. No, I stammered. I'd been to this same hill for years, dozens of times while hanging out with my friends, and this spot was miles away from the city and was usually filled with an ocean of starlight. Now, it was empty. Of course you can't, Sasha said softly as she looked at me. She wasn't looking into my eyes anymore. Her gaze moved slightly upward to my forehead. There's too much light pollution in the sky. I don't remember what happened after that. I woke up several hours later to a bright, sunny day. The pitch dark that had filled my vision last night was replaced by the lush greens of the forest and a cloudless sky. The fuck was that? I muttered to myself as I got up and looked around. Sasha and her bike were both missing. I had no idea if she was even real or if it was all some horrific drug trip. All of the events of the previous night, especially Sasha's final words, circled through my head as I walked my bike and began the ride back home. I chose to take a different path to my apartment to avoid getting close to Sasha's. If she was real, I never wanted to see her again. As I pedalled near the cement steps of my apartment complex, I was struck 
with the meaning of Sasha's words last night. Quickly turned around and biked straight to the same library I'd met her. It was time to go back to school. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this story today. It really means a lot to me and to the author of the story, of course. Well, if you want to know more about me, I'm pretty much everywhere on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can download my music on SoundCloud. Um, I've got a Patreon if you feel like. Throw me a dollar or two. Very much appreciated. And of course, on Reddit, I have a place where you can leave stories if you want me to read one that you've written. Well, hoping to see you all again very soon. Till then, sweet dreams. Bye-bye.